Welcome everyone to the new Fly Fisher. I'm your host, Rebecca Red, and in this episode, I'm in Algoma, Ontario at the Northern Walleye Lodge. We're looking for bass, pike, and walleye. We're gonna see how the walleye react to the fly. It's gonna be a great show. Stay with us. The new fly fisher has been made possible thanks to Algoma Country, That Real, Orvis Sporting Traditions, Scientific Anglers, Able Reels, Ross Reels, Superfly, Fly Fishing for Everyone. This week, Rebecca continues her tour of Algoma Country with a visit to Dog Lake and Northern Walleye Lodge. Located west of Missinabe Provincial Park and north of Wawa in beautiful Northern Ontario, Northern Walleye Lodge offers American plans and housekeeping plans to fit your budget. Dog Lake offers world-class fishing for walleye, northern pike, smallmouth bass, lake trout, perch, and whitefish. There's also streams and portage lakes that have populations of brook trout. Joining Rebecca today is lodge owner Warren Thibodeau. He's an avid angler with a vast knowledge of the lake. Let's see if we can get it to the net. Or Warren, I'm gonna let you be my net man. Yeah, beautiful. It's this nice little um, leech pattern that I'm using is super successful here. Off comes that. There you go. Not the biggest in size, but I will take it. A lot of fun on the fly rod. That's Put her back for a nice little release. There we go. Thanks, sweetheart. Off you. <laughs> Give you a shower too. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> That's great. <sighs> Over at the main lodge, we have a pool table for people who want to come up and play pool, get to, get, get to talk to other people at the lodge, uh, look over the maps. Uh, we also have uh, uh, satellite TV, if anybody wants to come up and watch a hockey game or a football game or whatever, whatever they're trying to watch at home, but they, they kind of can't live without. Um, we have a l small little store, just sell little, little stuff like little hooks and jigs, and, but uh, most people come with their, their main stuff as it is. And the food we offer, sometimes it's like prime rib, and, you know, we do pork chop chicken and stuff like that, but it's all home cooked meals, and you know, we give you all kinds, all kinds of make sure you don't go away hungry. You got desserts, and juices, and all the good stuff to go with it. Come here. 
here. I think I might need a net there, Warren. Good man. Let's see here. Oh, yes. Yeah, second. Is that a... <laughs> it's a white fish. <laughs> That's awesome. There we go. Wow, ever cool. Look at the size of that fish. That's a monster. Sometimes we just have to catch them and keep them. And I don't mind keeping a white fish. Um, they're tasty, they're plentiful, and sometimes they take the fly too deep and there's really nothing you can do about that. Um, they're very plentiful, so I don't feel guilty. The max bed what we have is 54, but uh, we've never seen that many. It's uh, the most I've had since I've been here has been 44, but on average it's about 30, 32 people a week. But uh, you never know what the cabins are very, very well spaced out. They're about 250 feet to 500 feet apart, and uh, you don't really see your neighbors too much unless you see them at the fish cleaning station. People generally either phone from Chapel or Wawa for to let us know departure time. Uh, what time they're going to be at the dock? We pick them up and we bring them across by pontoon boat and it's about a five and a half mile ride into the lodge, and, you know, which is about eight kilometers roughly. looking for pike in search of gators. Oh, okay. I don't know what this is, but it's putting a bend in my rod. I love it. All right. Still there. The mystery fish is about to be revealed. What? A little bit of head shake. These pike, you know, what, no matter the size, when they get over a certain size, they really put on a good fight. A great sport fish. There you go. Whew. You want to Whoa, hold? we got a nice pike to the boat. What did he ever eat that fly? Yeah, it's in there. So it was a, a red and a white. Um, streamer type fly, and it seems to be the ticket this morning. All right, let's um, let's put them back in the water for right now, and I'll get the pliers. Okay, well we got this lovely fly out, and I'm about to do a release, and I've put on my glove to for easy fish handling here. And here we go, guy. And uh, we're just about to release this one. There's a good fighting pike. Go, sweetheart. Remember, 90% of all water is void of fish. That means you must target the remaining 10% of the water to be successful. Now, what is that 10%? Whether you're fishing for smallmouth bass, pike, or walleye, you must think structure in order to find fish. For smallmouth bass and pike, areas such as underwater humps, the edges of weeds, a felled tree, an isolated rock, or anything man-made such as a dock. The top areas agreed on by most fishers for walleye, bass, and pike are drop-offs. This allows the fish to remain deep and away from predators and ambush prey as they move out of the shallows. So what I'm doing here is I'm fishing in a grid pattern. I'm casting towards shore, 
and I'm stripping my leech pattern in and I'm moving it forward about four feet ahead. It's allowing me to cover ground in a more efficient manner, increasing my chances of getting that bass. Oh. Ooh, nice bass. You like that purple streamer. Pink, pinky purple. Oh, we got <laughs> Say long line release, there you go. In this week's photography tip, I'm gonna give you a little bit of information about one of my most favorite all-time lenses. It's a 16 to 35 millimeter lens. It's extremely versatile. With the 16 to 35, I'm able to take landscape photos at the same time with the same lens, take incredible fishing photos in the boat. 16 to 35 millimeter lens, one of the best purchases you will make for your camera. Ready? Ready? Here he comes, here he comes. Here he comes. Fish on. <laughs> oh, nice. Another beautiful, one of my favorite, favorite fish on the fly. Smallmouth bass. Come here, sweetheart. Let's get that out. There you go, it might be small, but they sure are fun on the fly. There's nothing wrong with that. All right. Here we go. <laughs> I knew that was gonna happen. <laughs> Another shower. I gotta clean my sunglasses off. Oh, great day. See a lot of underwater structure, big boulders, exactly where bass and pike are gonna hang out. Oh, fish on! <laughs> yeah, I saw that take. That was awesome. Nice bass. Another nice one. This action, top water with a little green woolly bugger. Yeah, nice. This non-stop action with this bass. Beautiful smallmouth bass here at Northern Walleye Lodge. Absolutely so much fun on the fly. All right, sweetheart, there you go. Beautiful. <laughs> this has been such an awesome day. I can't ask for better. Identifying smallmouth bass from largemouth bass is as easy as looking at how far back the mouth of the fish extends. If the mouth only extends to the middle of the eye, it's a smallmouth bass. If the mouth extends beyond the eye, it's a largemouth bass. Body markings are also a giveaway. Largemouth bass have a definite black lateral line and their color is green. The smallmouth has vertical black lines, especially on the cheeks, and is a brown color.
Recommendations for equipment to bring with you would be stout action nine foot number eight weight rods and nine foot number nine weight rods with matching large arbor reels and smooth drags. The rods need to be stout for casting weighted systems and large flies when fishing for pike. Smooth drags are also necessary to handle the long runs pike will take during the fight. If you wish only to target the very plentiful walleye and bass, a 9 foot number 7 weight rod and reel will be heavy enough. Line recommendations would be a floating line for shallow water pike and using poppers, a sinking tip line, and a full sinking line when the fish are in deeper water. A must have and also one of the most important pieces of the equipment to have is nautable wire bite tippet. Use at least 10 inches of it to ensure you do not have a fish bite you off. The most successful flies for this trip were red and white streamers that are at least four inches long, conehead woolly buggers, green and yellow crayfish patterns, and black woolhead leeches. The weather had been pleasant with sunny skies and high pressure. Bass and other fish react to bright skies and high pressure by going deep and getting real tight to cover. They also get very inactive. Responding to those changes will improve your odds. Three tactics you should use when you encounter tough conditions are to go deeper, go slower, and fish the cover. Nice. <laughs> oh, that came out of nowhere. Oh, how I love bass fishing. No matter what the size, these guys are awesome. Keeping my line nice and tight. That is key for landing any kind of fish, especially bass. They really like to shake their head, jump out of the water, try and get that fly out of their mouth. We're not gonna rush them, we're gonna let them come to it. Come here, feisty one. Yeah, I'll walk them to you. There we go. Nice, nice bass. All right, I'm just gonna take out the fly. There we go, simple as that. And give them a little lip. There we go. Beautiful smallmouth bass here at Northern Walleye Lodge. Oh, absolutely another beautiful bass. Let him go, let him grow. Here you go, sweetheart. Here we go. That was wonderful. One of the nice things about visiting Northern Walleye Lodge is the wildlife. You may see at any given times a moose, a black bear, loons, ducks, or birds of prey such as bald eagles. There is never a shortage of wildlife to see. The setup that was used most on this trip was a full sinking line to a three foot section of 15 pound test leader and attached to that 10 inches of nautable wire bite tippet and then the fly. So the type of fly that I'm using right now it has the hook that curves to the top, so you can actually let it touch the bottom, and uh, so you're not gonna get hooked to the bottom. So it's very handy when you have a sinking line, and what I'm imitating is um, the crayfish. So I've noticed that the bass are eating a lot of the crayfish. There's, there's um, a good amount of crayfish in the water, so I've taken a pattern that looks a lot like that. So I'm letting it sit a lot, settle on the bottom, and then I'm just gonna strip it in and it's gonna kind of scoot along the bottom of the, the rocks and, and whatnot, just like a crayfish would. So hopefully that'll stimulate bass to turn around and wanna pick it up. So 
So what I'm doing is I'm casting towards shore because I'm seeing there's a significant drop off and I'm hoping that there's a bass home just around where it drops off. Nice bass, nice, nice bass. Warren, we've got one. We're in a kind of a leech strip pattern. I'm gonna bring him right to you. Come on, buddy. Beautiful. Oh man, that's a nice size. Look how healthy. Look at that. Beautiful. There you go. I mean, it's not a walleye, but they have great bass here at Northern Walleye Lodge. I'm gonna let them go. Get back into the water. I don't want to stress them out. Beautiful. Let them go. Catch them another day. There you go. Beautiful. I hope you enjoyed our show here at Northern Walleye Lodge. For more information, visit our website. From all of us here at the new Fly Fisher, tight lines and big fish. The new Fly Fisher has been made possible thanks to Algoma Country, That Real, Orvis Sporting Traditions, Scientific Anglers, Able Reels, Ross Reels, Superfly, fly fishing for everyone. To learn more about the new Fly Fisher, our locations, contests, news, and much more, come visit and like us on Facebook.